Okay. I hope that worked. I've, I'm not very familiar with all the functions and things of this device. So. Um, anyhow, it's getting kind of windy and cold. <laughs> you know. You think for my comfort's sake, I try to be more predictable. So you can see what I see. It always looks so much better with your eyes. Like when I look at these videos on a monitor, maybe I just don't have a big enough monitor. But uh, yeah, so we got we got these uh, factories. You know, and every decent sized city has <coughs> decent size. Anyway, any uh, large, large. Gosh, okay. For cities that have factories, they are systems that are, you know, they, people count on them, <laughs> you know, so many of these things, um, it's very distracting to try to just look while I'm speaking to try to imagine into the future at what this sort of, the words what I'm saying just will result in. That's probably not a good way to live. You want to live in the immediate past or in the past. People say don't live in the past, live in the present, but actually for for the sake of most things, you know, in order for things to be predictable, there has to be a sequence, a previous sequence that is unfolding. And that is what we take into account and then it just kind of stops at the present and sort of, as long as it's functioning, it's like a, uh, a velocity, you know. And when things slow down, you know, whatever they may be, whether, just the patterns that people get in. When those, ah, oh, snowflake in the eye. Snowflakes are getting kind of big. Um, anyway, people get, uh, people get... I don't know, just uh, unsettled. <laughs> they uh, get disturbed when these systems that are regular, you know, all of a sudden change, like, you know, accelerate or decelerate. I don't think that's a word, negative acceleration. Anyway, you get, you get it. I saw a fish jump, a big black fish, I don't know what it was kind of came up for errors. I don't know why they do that, but... <laughs> um... <coughs> Excuse me, like I said, I just got up, so... Um, and I smoke, and I usually drink a lot of coffee. And I didn't, I didn't bring my tobacco with me, and I didn't drink a lot of coffee. So, this is just me, as I would wake up. Uh, so, I don't know, there's, when I talk about this stuff, it seems, it seems uh, so obvious, you know, so I can see why a lot of people wouldn't talk about this kind of thing, because it's, I almost expect for life to know this sort of thing, to just, um, you know, it's like, like the weather, for the most part. Um, you know, climates. We know our climates. If we've been here for, you know, a year, or um, a lifetime, you know, a generation, whatever, like a decade. Uh, you know, so that we've seen enough of the cycles, so we get an idea of the range the uh, highest winds, you know, the wettest rains, or the longest rains, or the coldest, hottest and coldest, you know, the barometric pressure, how high, low, all that sort of thing, you know. Most of us don't go putting ourselves on the edge of cliffs, because it seems, um, 
like the, a change in that situation would be drastic. <sighs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but uh, let's see. I like I like just taking it in, and I, but I don't want to make this just like a sort of <laughs> a family a family video, you know, like uh, a vacation. You know, I'll look like a, a sort of a thing to add to my photo album. But I do kind of want to slow down and just rest. But because I think I've said um, most of it, but I, I still don't feel that I tr translated the uh, the value of this way of looking at things. Um, I guess I could share a bit of concern, like I was trying to do, um, before I was interrupted by the Wi-Fi stuff. Part, part of my concern is that, um, people, when they, they fall into these patterns, fall, fall into them, um, when they get into these patterns of predictability, they lose, um, a little bit. They lose some options. Um, maybe that that is kind of a way of looking at it, you know, like pyramid um, as just a model, or not, not really a model, as a graphic representation of uh, sort of what I'm saying. You know, you, you think that a lot of things are possible. Um, and that's kind of the base of the pyramid. You know, when you start out in life, and it's really inverted because you think you could go in all sorts of directions. But as we live, we, uh, we narrow down, you know, these patterns, they get um, fairly more regular. I can see why people retire and do like vacationing and seeing the world and things, it's an escape from that. Sort of when you've got a lot of money saved up, then you can break free of the of that. Um, man, I, I hate when I do that. Like I, I sort of I, I got, feel like I got all these great ideas, and then I throw something in there that just kind of messes it up. But I think for the most part, this box seems to be changing colors. Those yellowish ones down there, they're getting porous too. I think the water is working things out of them. It's really interesting. I've, I've seen the life of this uh, wall for, for everything that's visible. I mean, down, there are these uh, cement blocks underneath. I, I don't really want to talk about so, like, things in life. Oh, this, uh, I guess I'll go back. I'll, I'll try to keep making uh, <coughs> videos. Maybe now that I'm not getting um, interrupted by the search for Wi-Fi signals, I can run on a tangent for a while or keep going on the circle for a while um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to clear my nose like I'm just gonna be gross I'm gonna I'm gonna set this down Smoking feels better now. I, I blew it off. Made sure the wind was taken. Anyway, um, um, so we got. That's oh, my concern. My concern for 
for sort of just the the wildness of life you know the potential of life the more that we get you know like let's put ourselves in a, in a possible future and, and maybe a very likely confu- a future because we're seeing it um, the use of technology unless something like this sort of technology that we're, we're coming up with you know like computers and robots and machines you know engines all this sort of thing I think we're going to see more and more of this a lot more like more than anybody alive today may have considered you know and it's really hard to consider it but I, I've thrown this idea around for a long time I mean science fiction writers you know they know what they're doing but I, I can't remember anyone in particular that came up with this idea this is more like pieces of a lot of different you know little pieces of a lot of different ideas that I've sort of put together over the years um this, this, this whole planet is not going to be here. And I don't mean it's going to be destroyed or, or life is going to die on it. It's, it's going to be torn apart. Um, torn apart, I say. Um, but turned, converted into machines. Um, you know, spaceships, whatever biospheres, just uh, little little vessels like the Death Star I mean, and that's that's a bad name for it maybe, or maybe not I mean, death isn't such a bad thing when you're alive and something else is dying like something that you're going to eat, a plant um, for 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 life as it has been thus far, okay? Yeah, things that's changing, and, and I'm glad, because I hope that someday we can take over the job of the primary producers, the, uh, the organisms that are taking, you know, um, nutrients from things, the minerals, the elements. You know, they're making the molecules that, you know, what do I want to say? Higher orders of life, such as ourselves, such as uh, animals, you know, bacteria, the uh, archaea, the bacteria, they are, um, some of them, birds, um, I don't know what kind of ducks those are, or not ducks, whatever, fowl, um, yeah, life, life is currently, um, it, it's converting, it's converting this planet into life, okay, go back four billion years, and there was none, I, I mean, things were drastically different, um, and, and we've changed over the years, we've gone from primarily using carbon dioxide, and I, we still, for the most part, use carbon dioxide, but some of us, uh, use the byproduct or the byproduct byproduct of that reaction of um, photosynthesis to to fuel ourselves to and that's that's really one of the things I, I don't know enough about uh, atomic physics and chemistry um on that sort of scale to, to know exactly what it is it sharing of electrons um, you know there's so many videos I've taken in so much you think um, something really important like that would stick but yeah I, just, I don't think most people don't look at things this way they don't value um, maybe this sort of an explanation for things and, and that's, that's okay, it's reasonable. I mean, we're always transitioning. Anyway, so, 
we are gradually converting this planet from the surface. The surface where the solids, liquids, and gases all sort of blend. I mean, it, it's really that, it's this water. That stuff, that boundary on the shore, just that, that area. I mean, where, where the solids, the water, and the gas are all churning. That is so important. It, it's where, it's where air is getting mixed in with the water, where the water is eating away at the solid. nice it's, it's nice being on the shore I don't <laughs> um, so I, I do want I do want to keep going um, anyway so life is uh is breaking breaking it's uh it's forming like i was trying to get at you know it's uh converting this stuff like let's take this for instance i mean we've got these waves we've got this pattern this pattern that keeps repeating now, life isn't doing that. <laughs> life isn't doing that. That's the gravity and the wind and, you know, that's more the physics, more the geology, the, uh, I don't know what to call it. I'm, I'm suddenly like overwhelmed. It's a really awesome thing. I'm getting like a really warm feeling in the front of my forehead. Maybe it's because I'm not walking into the cold. Or maybe it's just because, you know, I sort of see the, a mechanism, a mechanism for uh, the emergence of this sort of chemical complexity. And it's, complexity is just a word that I come up with, you know, that I use to try to explain it, but uh, I didn't see anybody, but uh, yeah, I don't blame him. It was a little cold out there, strong wind. Yeah. Yeah. No, Thir 13 and not one catch. Yeah. You'd think you'd think the fish would be, you know, of really want food right now. Yeah. Um, German brown salt. German. I got it home on the wall. Nice. 37 and a half inches long, 26 and a half pounds. Yeah. Um, do you know where the minnows come from? Like, uh, 
Are they coming out of the river? Or are they coming uh, f up up oh, no, the lake? No, they're, they're way out. So they're they, way out there deep and. They're in a certain pot that's spawn now, and then they come in looking for food, and the fish is right on their tail. Okay, so so maybe conditions haven't like we haven't had enough warmth for long enough. Oh, I know it. Well, look at there. Yeah. I mean, you can still see the so, ice over there. Yeah. Look at all the ice right here. Yep. Yeah, so this is, this is bad. He, he's got that big trout. And I got two nice walleyes on the wall, one nine and a half and one eleven yeah. and a half pound. Hmm. I wonder wonder what sort of conditions trigger them to come in. You know, like uh, maybe insects showing up out there or oh, yeah, I imagine, what, temperature? Yeah. Or of course walleye, weather. you know, they love did, did you ever eat walleye? Um I don't think I have ever eaten walleye. Oh walleye, well I'll tell you. Walleye and perch, I just tell my wife a little while ago before it came down here. So. We went out to Perch's Market. I don't know if you know where that is. Yeah, right? yeah. Bass Hospital. 23 North, yeah. Uh, and I told uh, my wife, I said, if we went out there right now and you asked for one pound of walleye, I said, you know what it costs you? She said, yeah, too much. I said, it costs you $16 for one pound. That's wow. a dollar an ounce. And I said, then I turned around if you want a pound of, if you want a pound of Perch. I said, that would cost you $20 a pound. Perch, okay, huh? Yeah. The demand for that. Hmm. Well, I do hope things uh, turn around for people. I mean, especially ones that can't go yeah. out there. So the minnows come in. So the walleye, oh, they're, they're out right, there. They're right behind them, yeah. I came down here one night. This no kid. It was just about like this. It was before dark. Parked that. Uh, man right here. Yeah. hooks on and that started I think it was the second cast if I remember right the second cast I had one walleye and I was only here 22 minutes I had five big, five big walleyes in 22 minutes wow now that's that's what I call fishing yeah that's yeah. good timing yeah <laughs> but I'm looking for them to be in yet I mean I hope but oh they will yeah, I think there, so. there might be fewer out there I don't know if there are conditions yeah. maybe less minnows less walleye Overfishing, maybe from. Oh yeah, yeah, I believe that. And then 